Welcome to GreenBiz Studio. My name is Sarah Golden. I am VP of Energy at GreenBiz, and I am delighted to be joined today by Ryan Goodman, who is CEO of Scale Microgrid. Ryan, welcome to GreenBiz Studio. Yeah, thanks for having me. Looking forward to chatting with you. So can we just start out, what is a microgrid? Yeah, great question, because it means a lot of things and confuses a lot of people. Uh, but at, at scale, we think of microgrids as a smart interconnected system of on-site energy rather than, so multiple systems as opposed to one system. So generally for us, that includes some form of clean energy like solar PV. It generally includes storage, includes a combination of dispatchable generation or some other DR assets. Um, and, and our smart controls allow us to operate this both as a system or as individual components. So we can turn things on and off and, and really optimize the system to match uh, the energy supply with what the facility is actually using. Um, and that results in being able to provide a lot of benefits for a host facility. Generally, our like catchphrase or the one I use at least is uh, we provide any combination of cheaper, cleaner, more reliable power. Um, and depending on the customer that we're talking to, we can mix and match those to align with what they're they're most interested in. So some customers come to us and say, all they care about is cost savings. That's great. Some say they just care about resiliency. That's great. Some come and say they want to reduce their carbon footprint or ideally all of the above. Um, so I don't know. That's a very quick overview, but that that's how we define a microgrid and, and how it generally applies to our customers. Yeah. And that helps illuminate some why it can be confusing because that sounds really dynamic. That's a lot of different <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah, I yeah. live in California and like increasingly people are talking about having solar plus storage, especially as we have these power shutoffs to avoid wildfires. You hear about this as a resilience play. So is solar plus storage a microgrid? And if not, like what's the difference and why would somebody go the extra mile to get a microgrid? Yeah. So it depends on some people define that as a microgrid because technically it is two systems between a battery and a solar. But how we think of it is if it's not providing some form of resiliency, it's not really operating as, as a microgrid. So, and don't get me wrong, solar and solar storage are, are great. They're, they're really good, especially standalone solar is amazing for reducing carbon footprint. It's an important component of a microgrid that we design. And especially in California, it's kind of silly for you nowadays to put in solar and not include a battery. Um, and that's great, um, but but it still doesn't go as far to be able to provide the cheaper, cleaner, more reliable, especially the resiliency play. You know, solar by itself does not provide resiliency. Batteries helps provide some, but the cost of batteries doesn't allow you to really provide resiliency, especially for businesses, which is what we're primarily focused on. But um, a business can't especially with PSPS events, can't be out of business for or out of power for a day or a week. And solar and storage just doesn't provide that resiliency versus a more traditional microgrid as we define it does. Right. So how is this different from like a backup generator, for example? And are you seeing increasingly places that are in spots like California and other places that are that are experiencing grid disruption asking about microgrids more often? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know, five years ago, no one knew what a microgrid was. Now the phone's ringing off the hook. So people definitely understand more of what the value it provides is. Um, and so a generator versus a microgrid both do a good job of providing resiliency. The differentiation being we generally call, define generators as cost centers. So you need to invest whatever the number is, a few million dollars, you buy a piece of equipment and it sits there idle for whenever there is um, an outage. And that is helpful for some facilities, and some people are comfortable with that. But you you compare that to a microgrid, which does the exact same thing, meaning it provides resiliency when the power is out, but it does so in a much more economical way. So we define that as a profit center as opposed to a cost center. Um, and so you get the resiliency, or we would argue, since there's multiple generating sources there, more reliable than a stand than an emergency generator. So you get better resiliency, and you get it at a much more economical basis. So you can actually save money as opposed to outlaying millions of dollars for a existing generator or standard generator. 
Yeah, I hear increasingly how people that have these additional distributed energy resources are able to do things like shift when they use load to get off of peak times and that they can be continually saving money by having more control over how their energy is generated and when they're using it. Can you tell me a little bit about the economics behind this? Like, how does this pencil? What's the payback period? What's the value? Yeah, generally, um, so exciting for the most part. It, just, it depends on a lot of factors, depends on geography, depends on utility, but the majority of our customers are seeing between a zero and 30% savings compared to their status quo, if you will. Um, and the way we offer this to the market is through um, what's known in the industry as energy as a service type business model. So there's no money up front or there's no money down, however you want to describe it. And basically a customer will sign a long-term agreement with us. In the solar space, it's commonly known as power purchase agreements. We call them microgrid service agreements, but basically the, the customer signs a long-term agreement with us to for us to provide services over the long term, whether that's electricity or energy or resiliency, whatever it might be. Um, we will then come install whatever it is, millions of dollars of equipment on your site. We will own it um, and provide those services. And the reason that's generally very appealing to our customers is they don't they don't want to know, and it's too complicated for them to understand how energy provision and how we do what we want to do. So this allows them to stay hands off. It also is much less risky because we're owning it. They don't have to worry about managing it if it breaks or dealing with any of that. And also a microgrid is inherently complex. So we're continuing to optimize the asset for 20 years. And that how we use that might change over 20 years, depending on your load profile or depending on what's going on in the grid. So there's a number of reasons why that business model is very successful for us in the microgrid space. But all that boils down to Generally, our customers are saving a bunch of money, but it, it varies depending on a number of factors. Hmm. It also sounds like you're describing this maturation of like the contract models and the financial models that are making microgrids more accessible. Is that is that what you're witnessing? The sort of making it work for more use cases? Yeah, I mean that's definitely true. And I think in many ways, the way we compare it is for what happened in the solar space, you know, 15 to 20 years ago our business is doing the same thing for microgrid. So a combination of business model, financing, and technical innovation, we unlock microgrids to the masses. So you don't have to be um, taking a ton of risk um, or being a, a first mover or doing so at a loss in order to get involved with the benefits of what a microgrid provides. We kind of take care of all that and wrap it, and that's driven to a lot more adoption. Hmm. We're getting to a time where, unfortunately, that conversation about resilience is just becoming ever too prevalent. There's a lot of examples happening everywhere right now around these yep. power shutoffs. What type of customers or clients do you think are best suited for microgrids? Yeah, uh, it's really, you know, one of the benefits I already mentioned about microgrids is cheaper, cleaner, more reliable power. So what that means is there's a vast array of people that would be applicable to this for different reasons. Generally, anyone that cares about some combination of cheaper, cleaner, more reliable power. But our typical customers are all B2B. Um, industries include indoor ag, higher education, grocers, cold storage, water distribution, distribution centers, a lot in EVs we're doing because those are tremendously energy intensive, hospitality, hospitals, manufacturing. Um, so it really covers a, a large Swath, which is exciting because, I mean, again, comparing it to solar, solar does one thing really well, and that's reduce your carbon footprint versus a microgrid can do a number of things and hence making it accessible to a broader audience. You've mentioned that that triangle of cleaner, cheaper, more reliable. How much of those are at odds with one another versus complementary to one another? Yeah, they. I mean, they definitely are. The, our, our ideal customers, we design a system that meets all three, but they are. I mean, the easy example is resiliency versus saving money. I'll take an extreme example. A data center who all they care about is resiliency and you want N plus eight redundancy. If you're going to throw in a lot more redundancy, that costs more money and so you, and more investment. So you're not going to be saving as much money. Um, but for a typical customer with a balanced approach, you can accomplish all three. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for joining me today in Green Biz Studios. I'm always interested in hearing how the story is evolving around microgrids. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. This has been great. Um, looking forward to continue to chat with you guys in a few weeks. Until next time, I'm Sarah Golden for Green Biz Studio.
Thanks a lot.